And it's like I'm pulling out beads on a piece of string. And as they're pulling taut, it's unraveling the knot, which is the story. If, like me, you're a child of the 80s, then you'll probably remember these books, fighting fantasy books written by uh, Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone, where you get to choose your own route through the book. So this book isn't broken up into pages, but rather it's broken up into paragraphs, sections. And at the end of each section, you get to choose, as always, that turn to section 282. Let's look at this section for a moment, right? Section 267, we're on our adventure, and we find ourselves at a crossroads. It's incredible how often in these books you find yourself at a crossroads. And not surprisingly, we can go north, south, east, or west. And then we have to choose which number we're going to. So it's not linear, right? It's not like I'm going from the front of the book to the back of the book. I'm all over the place. Ultimately, what we end up with are battles where we find ourselves fighting monsters. As a player, I have skill and stamina, and if my dice rolls are high enough, then I defeat the chieftain and I win. And if my dice rolls are too low, then I die in some grisly and unfortunate way, uh, which is normally, you know, painful. I mean, I credit these with, these with teaching me to read, first of all. So, so for me, these are a really pivotal moment in my life. And, and, and so I bought my nephews the same books when they got to the same age, and now they're reading them, and I'm really proud of that too. But the thing about this book is, we can treat it not just as a, as a book, but also as a, as a graph, right? Now, I'm guessing to, to most people, when I say graph, people think of pie charts and bar graphs. But what I mean by a graph in this case is a set of nodes or vertices connected by lines to show you what decisions you can make at each node. And we use graphs in maths for, for everything. So we use graphs for showing how data is connected. And so when you're writing computer software, um, you end up with usually special cases of graphs like trees um, for eliminating data very quickly from searches. And so if you want to write a search algorithm that's quick, you need a graph. Um, or if you're um, into road traffic management and you want to know how best to flow traffic around a town, then you want to make a graph of that town to show where all of the roads are. But what I want to do is I want to make a graph of, of the book. This book is The Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Now, doesn't that just leap off the page? That's fantastic. You have to start somewhere. So we'll start at number one. That's where these books always begin with a little description of the adventure you're about to have. And then at the end, after a few yards, you arrive at a junction. Will you turn west, in which case turn to page 71, or east, in which case turn to 278? And we make a choice, and I'm going to show you that choice on the graph. So I'm going to start down here, uh, just because it's closest to me, uh, with a node, and it's number one. We either get to go out to another node at 71, or a node at 278. So now we immediately begin to see that the book branches out. At 71, we get two choices, turn to page 301, or turn to page 248. Obviously, with these books, you spend more time turning the page than you do actually reading the page. <laughs> 33, and suddenly we're being attacked by an orc. There's a very real possibility that we might die here. So this could be the end of the story, right? Which would be, you know, pretty sad because we've only made five decisions to get to this point. Um, in that case, you've got to go back to number one and start again and probably make different choices. So it's clear that if I keep doing this, uh, first of all, I'm very quickly going to run out of, of paper, but it's going to take a really long time, and I'm guessing that you probably don't want to watch that. So what I've done is I've written a little program which contains every link lifted from this book. So every time you get to make a choice, um, I've, I've noted down that choice, and I'm going to get the program to draw out the graph. And the way it's going to do that is I'm going to start with each node of the book distributed uniformly on the page, and the ones that are linked together, they're going to feel an attractive force, like a gravitational force between them, pulling them together. And the ones which aren't linked together, they're going to feel a repulsive force. And so the, the anti-gravity, right? So we're going to have to in invent anti-gravity at this point. That's going to let the computer form up the graph almost organically for us. Here we go. There's my big repulsive force coming in and showing us the choices that we've made. So I'm just going to zoom in on this start point. There it is. Um, immediately we make two choices, that's what we saw, and then we follow through on those choices and we see the whole maze just starting to unravel before us. By the time we get to this node right here, let's just zoom in on that. 
every choice that we make brings us to here. Now, if I display the numbers and we find that whatever we do in this story, if we want to progress, we have to get to number 214. And eventually, we get here to this enormous maze. Let me just turn off the numbers so we can see it more clearly. As a child, I spent a lot of time lost in this maze, the maze of, the maze of Zaga. I always used to find myself back at the same crossroads again and again and again. You might think that this book's about going and killing the warlock and stealing his treasure. But actually, the point of all of these fighting fantasy books is to turn to section 400. And, and that's the end. You know when you see turn to section 400, you know you've finished because that's always the last section. So it gives you a sort of warm feeling inside. Yay, I did it. You know. and, and we can see that right here. We can see that we make it through the maze of Zagor and then we're back onto, just like the start, a fairly linear path. But eventually we get to this gold piece, which is the magic number. That's 400. Okay, so, so I love that. That's brilliant. What you will have noticed if you've been paying attention is that some of these spots are red. I've gone through the book with Brady's help. Thank you, Brady. <laughs> um, I've gone through the book and I've made a note of every place you can die. And there's a couple of other points in this book which I think are quite interesting too. And that's that this node, for example, is black. Okay, now a black node is a situation that you find yourself in, which for me was always the most depressing. Now let's have a look. This black node is 118. So I'm going to look at section 118 in the book. Now, the first thing we notice about this section, and believe me, I got very good at noticing this when I was reading these books, there's no turn to. We're not going anywhere. We, we've turned to this section, and we've looked at the vampire, and he's killed us. That's why when I start turning my way through this book, my instinct was to leave my fingers in the decisions that I've made previously, because then when I get to section 118, and I'm killed by the vampire, I mean, you can know that my first instinct is, to, right, where was I then? And straight back to the previous section to make any other choice that I can possibly make. I can't help but noticing a few little, you might have to zoom in on them for me. What are those bad boys down there? Down here we find little clusters like this, which appear to be wholly unconnected to the rest of the story. And if you don't know Firetop Mountain intimately, like I do, and then this isn't going to make any sense to you. So look away now if you don't want to know the answer, right? Turn off. No, don't turn off. Oh, I know what we'll do. If you want to see what happens there, <laughs> click on, click on 400. <laughs> we'll have a little click on 400. That's great. Okay. And we'll have a separate hidden video where James explains what that is. Hi there, everyone. Just a quick message to let you know, the idea for this film on Numberphile came from a conversation with a friend of mine named Sean, who's making a feature length documentary about the guys who wrote these books. You can see some of the footage on the screen there, on the other side of me, and in fact you can see there one of the actual maps used by the writers to design their book, rather than the retrospective ones that we showed you. Now Sean's film is to be called Turn to 400, but to make it happen he's trying to raise money through Kickstarter. So if this is a topic that interests you, and you'd like to see this other film get off the ground, please go and support it, and I'll put a link underneath the video.